Good morning. Just a really quick video this morning to catch up on yesterday's cold brew progress. I hope everyone enjoyed last night's Irish coffees. I certainly did. Really good fun. Uh, so Nick is having a nice lie-in this morning, still in bed. Ivy's watching Peppa Pig. And I am just going to show you how the cold brew got on yesterday. Now, you might have noticed, following my advice yesterday to leave it in for 16 hours, I slept in this morning and left it in for 24 hours. So it might not be as good as maybe I would hope it would be. But still, it's going to be good. So, the Hario bottle. Yesterday, last time we saw this, this was just like completely plain. This morning, it's now cold brew. So this is dead easy to fix. You can just take the lid off and pour it out, but you've still got the filter in there with all the coffee. So what I prefer to do, it can get a little messy, is take that off. Let, the, let it drain out. Just so it's a little bit drier and then unclip that filter cage so you've got a bottle of cold brew you can just use so that's what i shall do flick around again right there you go bottle of cold brew filter cage job done really good actually oh that's really refreshing so that was an Ethiopian coffee a washed coffee bright light lemon earl grey citrus that kind of thing and you've got all of that in there plus a bit of malt loaf which you always get with cold brew uh, that with a splash of gin and if you've got tonic water or elderflower or lemonade or just more gin will be delicious maybe not this morning maybe later on to the cafetiere all you're going to do with this is slowly plunge. Slowly because you're trying to avoid getting the sediment up into the top half. And then slowly pour. More on that coming in a sec. Often good to um, hum or sing when you're doing a boring task like this. So, I don't know. If you try and sing the Grand Old Duke of York while doing it, that's probably the best way of doing it. There we go, done. I feel like the caffeinated Keith Floyd, one for the younger viewers. So again, a little bit siltier, a little bit less clear, a little bit less clarity on that, but still dead good. That one I can taste the over extraction a little bit more. So when you're using the cafetiere, make sure you set your timer and empty it at 12 or 16 hours. For me to have done that, I'd have to go to put half past four this morning. One gonna happen. Anyway, still nice, still tasty. You're gonna need a little bit of sugar to balance that when you actually go around to drink it. But you should have some syrup left over from last night. Now, the third method for cold brew that we prepared yesterday was the jar. I asked everyone to show me their jugs and what they were brewing in, but no one did. I mean, who'd have thought that wasn't going to work? Um, now, for a lot of people, this will surprise you. Um, I actually did pay some attention during sedimentology classes at university. Sedimentology is basically the deposition of particles in a water stream, which is how we're going to work out how to pour this out of here. So... The science behind this goes approximately like this. The faster the stream of water, the more energy it has and the more weight of particle it can carry with it. Which is why when it rains really hard, you get reasonable sized pebbles washed up onto the road because the weight of the water, the, the speed of the water is so much faster as it flows that it can take the pebbles with it. And then you get these little kind of flood deposits down the side of the road. Exactly the same principle here. If you pour really, really fast out of this jug, you're going to take all the particles with you and you're going to take silt and, and, um, and, and bits of coffee into your bottle. If you pour quite slowly, you'll get mostly coffee and you won't get so many silty particles. The problem with pouring quite slowly is you tend to get that little, I don't know how to call it, the back piss. 
Uh, you know when it dribbles down the back and goes off the back end of the thing? So there's a balance between pouring it fast enough to avoid the back piss, which is a word I've just invented, and um, slow enough to actually get the stuff out there without making a huge mess. So, at the risk of my kitchen, let's have a crack at this now. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour quite slowly into my filter, into my funnel, sorry. Now, because this is coffee and not pebbles, you are going to get some kind of chaffy bits coming out. But the shape of this jar should support me and help me because the particles that are heavier, the coffee grinds, should stay in the bottom and just get trapped in the neck. There is a point where I'm going to have to stop this though because my bottle's about to get full. But because I'm a damn professional, bottle is full, jar is empty. Woohoo! And as for the back piss, I had a little bit of back piss, but it wasn't the end of the world. Right, so let's have a little taste of that and see how that's worked. This is your rough as a rough thing. I'm going to say something inappropriate then. Rough as a rough thing, stick it in a jar and hope for the best brew. The other thing with this, you can also follow the same principle when you're pouring back out of the bottle. So, as you can see, still a little bit cloudy, but those big, fail those big particles of silt aren't in there, the big particles of coffee aren't in there, and with nothing more than just a sedimentological filtration, we've managed to extract the coffee grinds from this, which is good. Ooh, that's nice. This was the one that we made with the um, UKBC comp competition coffee. It's noticeably sweeter. Good coffee is good coffee, whatever you do with it. So, oh, that's a great tip. Pete Cora, thank you so much. Use a glass stirring rod on the leading edge of the jar you are pouring from to reduce your back piss. Great tip, thank you. So, noticeably sweeter. Florals are really obvious in that as well. Despite the fact this is by far the least sophisticated method of brewing coffee that we have used, super tasty, really nice cold brew. So what I'm gonna do, I've got my cold brew bottle, which can go back in the fridge as it is. I've now got my uh, back piss bottle, which can go back in the fridge as it is. I've got another bottle, I'll decant my cafetiere into that, and then I'll have enough cold brew, uh, I'll have enough cold brew to last me till the end of the world, which is kind of lucky, isn't it? Uh, what I'll probably do with that is then stick, some ice, stick them into ice cube trays, dump them in the freezer, um, and I'll then have coffee ice cubes for whenever I need them. No waste, happy days. So, I uh, just wanted a really quick catch up this morning, show you what we've done with the cold brew from yesterday. Um, I hope you enjoyed Irish Coffee Night last night. Um, videos are up on my Facebook or on my YouTube if you want to go back and review any of them. I'll be back tomorrow morning for our coffee break. Uh, I will be wearing a shirt because it's a work day. Today's a Sunday, so no shirt today. Um, tomorrow I'll be up, I'll be wearing a shirt, we'll make some more coffee, uh, we'll have some more nonsensical chatter around it. There have been people asking me for bread tips. I know nothing about bread. Everything I know, I stole from Rob Ashton. So please go on his YouTube. If you search Rob Ashton sourdough on YouTube, you'll find Rob Ashton's sourdough recipe, which is exactly what I use for mine because I just stole it. Anyway, um, just to be ever so slightly smug, my bread has come out of the oven and this is my wife's Mother's Day present. I have this morning's sourdough ready to go. Anyway, have a lovely day. Happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers out there. And don't forget, everything is awesome!